Well, hello, and how are you? Hey, friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in where else but St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, today is Sunday, May 24th, 2020, meaning I've got some happy birthday shout-outs going out to Karen Gaddy, Victoria Lynn Crow, and Erica Manning. So, without further ado, here is birthday song for the three of you. I said, hey, y'all, it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm say. You know, Karen, Victoria, and Erica, hey, you are one more year older today. So, happy birthday to you, I say. I said, hey, y'all, it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm say. You know, you're one more year older today, so happy birthday to you, I say, and many more. You cha 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 All right, all right, all right. And a happy Facebook. Well, I say happy. A Facebook poke. Facebook poke? Yes, a Facebook poke back. Going out to Amanda Sue Little. That's right. Amanda Sue Little. Uh, Brian Little's little sister. From uh, Facebook, yep, St. Charles West High School. Graduating class of whatever year it was she graduated. Because she did, you know. Cheerleader squad. Or I think she was cheerleading squad. Yeah. She got a letter. Got a letter. Uh huh, I'm sure. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Either cheer squad or cheerleading squad, whatever. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Anyway, happy, happy Pokey Day to you. Happy Pokey Day to you. Pokey, Pokey. All right, how about the weather forecast brought to you by none other than Family First Home Health Care. That's right, Family First Home Health Care. Wake up. Start notepad. Family First Go to sleep. That's right, Family First Home Care. Home Health Care, LLC. Where can you contact them? Well, why don't you just go over to Family First Home Care at Gmail or FamilyFirstHomeCare.com. For the website, you can throw on an application at either one. Plus, you could also call um, either Brandy, secretary, or Terry Berry, the, uh, I'm sorry, not Terry Berry, Tracy Berry, the um, uh, owner-operator at um, office phone 636-734-9802. Office hours are between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Closed for your major government holidays. Alrighty then, that being said, um, here's her local weather, 77 degrees out there right now, cloudy and or overcast, was well, raining, sprinkling here and there at times, but for tonight, variable clouds with scattered thunderstorms, lows around 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds as south to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chances of rain 60%. And then Monday, May 25th, scattered thunderstorms, highs around 86 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chances of rain 50%. And then a few clouds, a stray shower or thunderstorms is quite possible overnight with lows around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then Tuesday, May 26th, scattered showers with uh, and thunderstorms, highs around 86 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chances of rain 50%, few clouds lows with uh, 68 degrees overnight with um, winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then uh, scattered thunder showers and thunderstorms are with highs around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 
for Wednesday, May 27th. Winds are going to be south to southeast to 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain on that day, 40%. Partly cloudy skies early, and then scattered thunderstorms developing later at night. Lows with 68 degree temperatures of that's a Fahrenheit temperature, that is. Winds are going to be southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. And then how about this one? Thursday, May the 28th. Thunderstorms are quite likely. Highs around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be light and variable. And chances of rain, 80%. Thunderstorms are likely in the evening, and then a chance of scattered thunderstorms later on. Lows of around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds light and variable. Around Chances of rain, 80%. Winds are going to be coming out of the north, and that's probably close to around 5 miles per hour. And then Friday, May the 29th. Partly to mostly cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms in the morning. Highs around 76 degrees Fahrenheit with winds north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain 40%. Now partly cloudy with lows around 59 degrees Fahrenheit overnight with north to northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And that, my friends, concludes your five-day forecast for the St. Charles Viewing Area brought to you by Family First Home Health Care, LLC. Now, let's see what's going to be brought up to you right now by Wallace Resale. Wallace Resale on Facebook at um, Wallace Resale Facebook page. Go there and purchase items. That's right, all kinds of items. They've got them. You can get them. Just go to Wallace Resale. Tell them about Shenandoah Briscoe sent you from the Shen Show. And uh, that'll help them to let them know that, well, their advertising is working. All right. Hey, that'll work for me. Now, um, you know what they're bringing up? They're bringing up our daily read. And that would be, we're still in, um, we're still going to be in, in, in the uh, Arabian Nights. So, and we're still in the Talking Bird. So, here we go with the Arabian Nights. Okay, um, we left off with the Garden Keeper building that huge mansion and building the garden grounds so that, uh, and putting deer on it. Uh, follow deer so that the prince the princes and the princess might divert themselves with hunting when they chose so here we go when the country seat was finished and fit for habitation the intendant of the gardens went and cast himself at the emperor's feet and after re, re after re representing how long he had served and the information of age which he had found found growing upon him, begged that he might be permitted to resign his charge into his majesty's dispo disposal and retire. Well, the emperor gave him leave and with the more pleasure because he was satisfied with his long service, both in his father's reign and his own, and when he granted it, asked what he should do to recompense him, recompen recompensate him. Hold on, drink of water. And maybe a muscle spasm. Okay. Asked him what he could do to re recompense him. Well, sir, replied the in intendant of the gardens, I have received so many obligations from your majesty and the lay emperor, your father, of happy memories, that I desire no more than the honor 
of dying in your favor. He took his leave at the of the emperor and re retrieved with the two princes and and retired with the two princes and the princess to the country retreat that he had built. His wife lost it, of course. His wife had been dead some years, and he himself had not lived above six months with his charges before he was surprised by so sudden a death that he had no time to give them the least account of the manner in which he had discovered them. The princes Bahaman and Pervez and the princess Perizidia, who knew no other father than the int intendant of the emperor's garden, regretted and bewiled him as such and paid all the honors in his funeral obsequies which which love and fulfillment gratitude required of them satisfied with the sorry about that Satisfied with the plentiful fortune he had left them, they lived together in perfect union, free from the ambitions of distinguishing themselves at court or aspiring to plea to place of honor and dignity, which they might easily have obtained. One day, when the two princes were hunting and the princess had remained at home, a religious old woman came to the gate and desired leave to go in to say her prayers. It began then the oh it being the hour it being then the hour. Well the servant asked the princess permission, whom ordered them to show her into the orb oratory which the intendant of the emperor's garden had taken care to fit up in his house. For want of a mosque in the neighborhood, she bade them also, after the good woman had finished her prayers, to show her the house and garden and bring her to the hall. The old, psh, the old woman went into the uh, oratory, said her prayers, and when she came out to the princess's women invited her to see the residence, which civility, with which civility she accepted, followed them from one apartment to another. Followed them from one apartment to another <laughs> and observed like a person who understood what belonged to belonged to furniture, the nice arrangement understood the nice arrangement of everything. <sighs> they conducted. They conducted her also into the garden, and the disposition of which she found so well planned that she admired it, observing that the person who had formed it must have been an excellent master of his art. Afterwards, she was brought before the, person, the princes who waited for her in the great hall which in beauty and richness 
exceeded all that she had admired in the other apartments. As soon as the princess Sorry about that. As soon as the princess saw the devout woman, she said to her, My good mother, come near and sit down by me. I am overjoyed at the happiness of having the opportunity of profiting for some moments by the example and conversation of such a person as you, who have taken the right way by dedicating yourself to service uh, to the service of God I wish everyone were as wise and were as wise the devout woman instead of sitting on a sofa would only sit upon the edge of one the princess would not permit her to do so but raising from her seat and taking her by the hand, obliged her to come and sit by her. The good woman, sensible of the civility, said, Madam, I ought not to have so much respect shown me, but since you command and are mistress of your own house, I will obey you. And when she had seated herself before the before they entered into in any conversations, one of the princess's women brought a low stand of mother-of-pearl and ebony with a china dish full of cake upon it, and many others sat around it full of set around it full of fruits in season and wet and dry sweet meats the princess took up one of the cakes and presented her with it and said and said eat good mother and make choices of what you like the best you had no need to eat after coming so far you had need you had need to eat after coming so far madam replied the good woman i am not used to eat such delicacies but will not refuse what good has what god has sent me by so liberal a hand as yours while the devout woman was eating the princess ate a little too to bear her company and ask her many questions upon the ex- exercise of devotion which she practiced and how she lived, all of which she answered with great modesty, talking of various things. At last the princess asked her what she thought of the house and how she liked it. Madam, answered the devout woman, I must certainly have very bad taste to disapprove of anything in it, since it is beautiful, regular, and magnificently furnished. Magnificently furnished, sorry. With existence and judgment and all its ornaments adjusted in the best manner. Its its situation is as an agreeable spot, and no garden can be more delightful. But yet, if you will give me leave to speak my mind freely, I will take the liberty to tell you that this house would be incomparable if it had three things which are wanting to complete to complete it my good mother replied the princess presidia presidia what are those i in i interact i entreat you to tell me 
what they are. I will spare nothing to get them. Madam, replied the devout woman, the first of these three things is the talking bird, so sing singular a creature that it draws round in all the songs songsters of the neighborhood which come to accompany its voice. And the second is the singing tree, the leaves of which are so many mouths, so many mouths which from an harmonious concert of different voices the end never cease. And the third is the golden water, a single drop of which being poured into a vessel pro properly prepared, it increases so as to fill immediately and rises up in the middle like a fountain which continually plays and yet the basin never overflows. Ah, my good mother, cried the princess, how much am I obliged to you for the knowledge of these curiosities. I never before heard that there were such rarities in the world, but as I am pre prepared, but as I am pre persuaded that you know, I expect that you should do me the favor to inform me where they are to be Found. Madam, hold on. Do, do, do. Sorry about that. Oh, lost myself again. Every time I stop, my mouse clicks and the page turns. Madam replied, the good woman, I. Oh, okay, that they are to be found. Madam, replied the good woman, I should be unworthy the hospitality you have shown me if I should refuse to satisfy your curiosities on that point, and am glad to have the honor to tell you that these curiosities are all to be met within the same spot on the confines of this kingdom toward India. The road lies before your house, and whoever you send needs but follow it for twenty days, and on the twentieth only, let him ask the first person he meets where the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water are, and he will be informed. After saying th this, she rose from her seat, took her leave, and went her way. The Princess Perizetia, the Princess Perizetia's thoughts were so taken up with the talking bird, singing tree, and golden water that she never perceived the devout woman's des uh, departure until she wanted to ask her ask her some questions for her better information for she thought that what she had been told was not a sufficient reason for exposing herself by undertaking a long journey however she would not send after her visitor but endeavored to remember all the dis directions, and when she thought she had recalled every word, took real pleasure in thinking of the satisfaction she would have if she could get these curiosities into her possession. But the difficulties she apprehended and the fear of not succeeding made her very uneasy. She was absurd. She was abs absorbed in these thoughts, and when her brothers returned from hunting, 
who, when they entered the great hall, instead of finding her lively and gay, as she was, won't, as she was wont to be, were... as she was wont to be, were amazed to see her so pensive and hanging down her head as if something troubled her. Sister, said Prince Bahama, Bahaman, what has become of all your mirth and gaiety? Are you not well? Or has some misfortune befallen you? Tell us that we may know how to act and give you some relief. If anyone has affronted you, if anyone has affronted you, we will resent his in, in insolence. We will resent his insolence. The princess remained in the same posture some time without answering, but at last lifted up her eyes to look at her brothers, and then held them down again, telling them nothing disturbed her. Sister said, <laughs> Sister said, Prince Bahaman, you concerned the you conceal the truth from us, and there must be something of consequence. It is impossible we could observe so sudden a change if nothing was the matter with you. You would not have us satisfied with the evasive answer that you have given, and do not conceal anything unless you would have a suspect that you are renounced in the strict union which has betrothed sub subsidized between us subsidized between us hitherto 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 bes beside us the princess who was not who had not the smallest intention to offend her brothers, would not suffer them to entertain such thought. But, brother, she said, Princess Pervez, said, brother, said Prince Pervez, it is not proper that you, who are the head of our family, should be absent. I desire my sister should join with me to oblige you to abandon your design and allow me to undertake it. I hope to acquit uh, myself as well as you, and it will be a more regular proceeding. I am persuaded of your good will, brother, replied Prince Bahaman and that you would succeed as well as myself in this journey. But I have resolved and will undertake it. You shall stay at home with our sister, and I need not recommend her to you. The next morning, Bahama mounted his horse, and previous, and the princess embraced and wished him a good journey. Wait a minute, somewhere along the line, she must have told him. Okay, sorry, I must have jumped to the wrong page. Anyway, the Arabian... Her some questions for her better information, for she thought that what she had been told was not a sufficient reason for exposing herself by undertaking a long journey. However, she would not da 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 da. 
Okay, you may think as you please, but I cannot help telling you that I am persuaded. They are absolutely necessary, and I shall not be e easy without them. Okay, this is a whole page that I missed. No wonder. Wasn't making a whole lot of sense, was it? Uh, the princess, who had not the smallest in intentions to offend her brothers, would not suffer them to entertain such th a thought, but said, When I told you nothing disturbed me, I meant nothing that was of importance to you, but to me. It is of some consequence. And since you press me, eh, and since you press me to tell you by our strict union and friendship, which are so dear to me, I will. You think, and I always believed to, I mean, so too that this house was as com so complete that nothing was wanting. But this day I have learned that it lacks three rarities which would render it so perfect that no country seat in the world could be complete or compared with it. These three things are the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water. After she had informed them wherein consisted the excellency of these rarities, a devout woman added, She had made this discovery to me, and told me the place where they are to be found, and the way, and the way thither, perhaps you may imagine, these things of little consequence, that without these additions to our house will always be thought uh, sufficiently elegant, and that we can do without them. Uh, you may think uh, as you please, but I cannot help telling you that I am persuaded that they are absolutely necessary, and I shall not be easy without them. Therefore, whether you value them or not, I desire you to consider what persons you may think proper for me to send in search of the curiosities I have mentioned. Sister, replied Prince Bahaman, nothing can concern you in which we have not an equal interest. It is enough that you desire these things to oblige us to take the same interest. But if you had not, we feel ourselves inclined of our own accord and for our own individual satisfaction. I am persuaded by brother, uh, I am persuaded my brother is of the same opinion, and therefore we ought to undertake this con conquest. For the importance and s singularity of the undertaking deserve that name. I will take the charge upon myself, and only tell me the place and the way to it, and I will defer my journey no longer and then till tomorrow and speaking of tomorrow that's when we will get back to the Arabian Nights the talking bird okay there we go Okay, okay, that looks like it's about time for our portion of the program called Our Daily Bread, brought to you by none other than 
The Bible with Briscoe 2020, which is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed in within one year with your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today in the Bible with Briscoe, episode 145, we will be covering 1 Chronicles 22 through 24 and John 8, 28 through 59. That's the Bible with Frisco 2020 on YouTube. All right, hey, uh, let's see here. Uh, today's devotion is called Talking Tables. Talking Tables, well, I be. And uh, today's scripture for the uh, devotion, Talking Tables, is Acts 2, 42 through 47. And so I can read Acts 2, 42 through 47. But you uh, can, I cannot read the Daily Bread because they have their own narrated version. So therefore, you should be able to go on to odb.org and press on the little emblem over there on the left that says Daily Devotion and go ahead and read that for yourself. Now, it is only proper that I should say you should give a little donation so that they can help spread the word all around the world to spread their pamphlets and their web page in Jesus mighty name amen all right here we go the talking tables acts 2 42 through 47 the fellowship of the believers they devoted themselves to apostles teaching and the fellowship to be to the breaking of bread and to prayer Everyone was filled with awe the, at the many wonders and signs performed by them, by the apostles. Hmm. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day the, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the, flavor, the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okie dokie, that concludes our portion of the program called Our Daily Bread, which was brought to you by The Bible with Briscoe 2020. All right, thank you so much for tuning in today. Hey, I've got one song for you today, and that would be, well, goodbye, my friends, it's a time to go. I said goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you. Thanks for tuning in to The Shen Show, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I, so be blessed, and come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, hey, I'll be here, and I hope that you are, too.